Good morning, everybody. Today we are going to go over chapter two in the Stars, Constellations, and Life Cycles iBook. Chapter two talks about the life cycle of stars. And we start out with kind of this a little bit morbid picture of a human from birth to death. And although stars are not alive, they don't possess any of the characteristics of life, they still do have these stages that they go through from when they first ignite um, to when they age, run out of fuel, and eventually die um, or fade out. Um, all stars are created in stellar nurseries called nebula. Now this picture right here is the Pillars of Creation Nebula, or actually it's a part of the Eagle Nebula. And these Pillars of Creation right here, which are just masses of gas and dust swirling around, these things are huge. Um, the Pillars of Creation are five light years across and ten light years tall. So um, the distance across is greater than the distance from us to our nearest star aside from the sun. So it's kind of a mind-blowing size. But these are all over in the universe and stars are collecting material and coalescing together to create gravity and eventually they ignite and clear out their space, their area of space, um, and start shining. Um, for most of a star's life, recall that in chapter one we talked about um, nuclear fusion happening in the core of the star. For most of a star's life, that's all it's doing. It's just going about its daily duties of taking hydrogen and fusing two hydrogen atoms into helium. And that the, a product of that is a whole bunch of energy. When a star is in this phase, it's called the main sequence. And a star will actually spend about 90% of its life in the main sequence. Our sun right now is in its main sequence. It's been burning for about five billion years and it'll burn for another five to six billion more uh, before it begins the end of its life. Um, if you want to get into a lot of detail, you can click on this link right here. It'll talk about um, the time frame of all of these different stages. Um, after a star has exhausted all of its fuel, so it runs out of hydrogen, it's born with all the hydrogen it ever needs, and once it um, runs out of hydrogen to fuse into helium, a number of different things can happen. Um, <clears throat> as it says here, as a star begins to use up its hydrogen, it fuses helium into other atoms, like heavier atoms such as carbon. A blue star has exhausted its hydrogen fuel and is in a transitional phase. When light elements are mostly used up, the star can no longer resist gravity because nuclear fusion is pushing out on the star. And when nuclear fusion stops, there's so much material that gravity just makes it collapse. And eventually, once that happens, um, it will first cool and expand into what's called a red giant. So our sun will become a red giant and eventually gravity wins and it collapses down into what's called a white dwarf, which is just a really small, dim star, about the size of Earth. If it's a really massive star, our sun is only medium size, so a really massive star will have a little bit of a different route. It actually turns into a red supergiant, um, and that is actually a scientific term. Uh, I think they weren't very creative that day. If it's really big, it's called a supergiant. Um, it will, um, it will cool and expand, but expand much, much bigger, um, lighter atoms fuse into heavier atoms, um, that continues and continues and continues, um, until it collapses, and when it collapses, it's a huge explosion called a supernova. Um, a supernova, um, is very, very bright in our night sky, um, it says here at its peak, it could be brighter than all other stars and planets except for uh, Venus in the night sky. My light just turned off. Let me see if I can turn it back on. Come on, light. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, once the supernova happens, then um, another couple things can happen. After a supernova explosion, the leftover material in the core is extremely dense. If the core is less than about four times the mass of the sun, it will become a neutron star. 
neutron star is more massive, has more mass, but it's only a few kilometers in diameter. So it's really, really condensed. Um, if the star is really, 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 really big, it could become a black hole. Now, black holes are always topics of interest for students and scientists alike. Um, there's a lot unknown. We can't go to a black hole. We can't visit a black hole because nothing could survive the, um, the gravity. Um, it's so dense that not even light can escape the gravity. Light just gets sucked into it, which is why it's called a black hole because there's no light there. It's just darkness. Um, we can watch this little video together. This is just about the life cycle of stars.